What up guys, it's Cat Life. Today, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to reset. I'm gonna be showing you guys clips of team fights and random skirmishes from my last stream. And I'm gonna break it down, slow it down for you guys so that you guys know exactly what's going on so that you guys can apply that knowledge to your own gameplay. So the first clip I'm gonna show you is just a random double kill I got roaming bottom. So I see the Zyra, I know Ezreal's there too. My immediate thought is to just nuke the Zyra, she has nowhere to go. Even if she has flash, if I throw everything really quick, she's dead. But through everything, she gets one shot. Now I'm looking to immediately jump on the Ezreal. I'm already predicting that Zyra's gonna get one shot, so I'm already prepared to jump on the Ezreal right after. So I jump in with E, and here I do something a little bit important that you guys should also apply to your own gameplay is I don't immediately throw my EWQ out really fast what I do is I EW and I wait for Ezreal to pass me to the left so that once I throw my Q it's actually gonna block his path so he has nowhere to go but in this example he actually ends up flashing and it was perfectly timed with my Q so this clip pretty much shows you to be patient with your Q and don't just throw your EWQ out really fast. Because if you just wait just a little bit, you can actually catch flashes or aim the Q properly so that they have nowhere to go. Now here a team fight breaks out. So what I'm immediately doing is keeping note of what cooldowns have been used. So the first cooldown that's been used is our ulti and that's a pretty important cooldown because that can stop your ulti. So Zyra ulti is down. I see the Kha'Zix come out. So I have to be patient here. I have to wait. I can't really nuke the Kha'Zix. He uses his jump though. And then I see the Malphite ulti. That's when I know that I'm pretty safe to go in. So they jump in on the Sivir. Sivir dies. Set ulties the Malphite. So now I eat W. I see the Senna ulti, so here I'm just feeling out the fight, looking to just place daggers. Um, but me EWing right there pretty much allows me to set up the dagger towards this side right here. So I can set up a Q dagger around this area. So what I do is I dodge the Senna ulti and I throw a Q. It doesn't really go that far, but the Kha'Zix is here, so it ends up working out. I pick up the W, drag his flashes onto the Kha'Zix, and then I E onto the Kha'Zix. And here, Zyra and Senna are pretty much right there. So I saved my ulti for this situation, and I immediately jump in on the Zyra, and I E W Q ulti. And then my Q is perfectly placed on the Senna, so I jump in, and I E W Q. The Q grabs the kill, jump back onto the dagger, Go back on the Malphite, I auto E auto W and notice how I move before I throw out the Q so that it lands this way just in case um, I just like to aim it to where they have nowhere to go and it cuts off their path to safety so they pretty much have to commit. Drag his stopwatches, I jump on the, the Q dagger and then I use my E. I didn't get the kill, but I would pretty much use E to finish him off. So here, I see Caitlyn farming the wave, and I'm in a good spot off to the side to flank her. And I know I have the damage to kill Caitlyn, even though she's pretty strong. My burst is a lot quicker. So I'm looking to jump in on the Caitlyn, but I know the Morgue is there too. So if you see the way I play this fight, I E onto the minion. So that I have something blocking the Q. I Gunblade, W, Q, Ult. I get a lot of damage off, especially with the Electric Q po uh, proc there. So I'm looking to pretty much just one shot the Caitlyn. And that's pretty much the combo. E, W, Q, E with the Gunblade. Go for the one shots. And as you can tell, I also set up the Q onto the Morgana as well. So if I jump in on that dagger, then I'll get the reset if I time it right. And I would also be able to immediately act out of it. So, E, kill the Caitlyn. 
Morgana still has her bind. And what's really good when resetting is starting off with your E to start your new rotation so that you can displace yourself so it, you're a lot harder to hit with skill shots. You're just a lot more slippery. So here, I E behind her. She actually throws the bind upwards and then I throw the Q. If you see the way I moved, I moved a little bit down so that the Q would land towards her base so that she has nowhere to run. All right, so here's the team fight at Baron. We were trying to get the Baron, but we're getting pretty low. Enemy team comes and they're trying to stop us. They're trying to poke us down. So here is kind of a shaky fight. We have a Rise that's full health and we have a Lucian that's full health. I'm not exactly the strongest, but I know that I still have a lot of burst. It's mid game. Katarina's pretty strong around the mid game. So I got to play this fight patiently. Lucian and Rise don't have any CC to stop me and Rakan's pretty low so I know it's pretty safe for me to go in. I wait for an opportunity. I'm just waiting, being patient. Morgana throws out a bind. It's the Rise. So that's my chance to go in. I know that Rise and Lucian I can burst down with my ulti because they can't stop me from getting my damage off. So I see the Rise. I Q E ulti and if you see the Q is set up right on the Lucian. So it's a smooth transition into the Lucian. I E, get the electrocute, immediately kill the Lucian, and I see the Rakan behind him, and I immediately jump E W Q, get a little bit of healing off of the damage uh, with my E auto to help me live, and I get the triumph proc too, and then I jump in on the E. So here I see Rek'Sai about to fight the Lee Sin, and this is in the early laning phase. I want to be the one moving first. So if you see. I'm moving. I'm not exactly healthy. So here I kind of made the mistake of walking into the Lee Sin. Uh, and he just cues me. I probably should have dodged it. But I didn't play the round it. So then he cues into me. I get an auto E auto and I W. And I got to back off. So that was me just trying to get a little bit of damage before stepping back. Now I got to wait. I'm being patient here. I know that the only setup here is if Rek'Sai gets a good knockup. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm kiting. Then I see Lee Sin get knocked up by the Rek'Sai. So this is my chance to go in with my QE. And then I kind of kite away. The moment I get the reset, I W and I flash out so that Vlad doesn't kill me and I get the Triumph Brock. So I have a dagger, the W dagger set up there. And Vlad still has pull. He pulls here thinking that Rek'Sai was going to knock him up, but Rek'Sai did a good job of waiting and being patient. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Rek'Sai here gets a knock up, so that's my chance to go in. I QE auto, and he dies. So here it's good to save your abilities. You don't want to throw too much, because if I didn't have my Q when jumping on the Lee Sin, then I probably wouldn't have gotten the kill. So I didn't immediately eat WQ. So just know that I used my EW only. I used my auto E auto as well. To maximize damage and guarantee the kill on the Lee Sin afterwards. Now here is a pretty intense fight. Late game. Level 14. So it's around like mid to late game. I have to feel out the fight. Vladimir. He looks like he's ready to charge in. So I see this and I wait for Vlad to commit. He has his E, so I know he's going to try to do something. He flash ults E's and tries to jump in on the Caitlyn. So what I want to do is I want to make sure Vlad dies, keep him alive. So I knew he was going to die here. So I just went for the E, get into range, Gunblade, Q. And Caitlyn ends up getting the kill. And now I see Rek'Sai dead and Cho'Gath is the only one there. And he's getting chased by three. So here, you could use Cho'Gath as bait. And I'm, I'm pretty much using Cho'Gath so that they can walk up and overextend while I set up daggers. So Thresh actually flashes onto the Cho'Gath. Now he has no flash. So if I ever were to jump on him, I can potentially get the reset off of him. But I have to consider all the CC being used. So right now, there's the Thresh and there's the Malphite. I know Malphite did not ulti yet. So I'm just waiting. Set up a W. Now Thresh and Ezreal are walking up to me, knowing that Malphite has ult. 
And I also know Malphite has ults. So what I do is I play around the Malphite ulti. And I see the Ezreal walking up to the dagger. So I know that the moment I jump in on this dagger, Malphite's going to ulti me. But I see that coming. I jump in. I Q the Ezreal. Malphite ults. And I flash. And I ult. Get the Ezreal. I have the Q perfectly set up onto the Thresh. I E W Q. E onto the Thresh. Kill him. And then I W again. Q. E. And Malphite gives up. And we get the kill. Now here we are in lane. Syndra's kind of oom. Um, and I'm pretty low on health. And Syndra's sick. So she's looking to ulti. Um, I'm just trying to clear the wave. And trying to find a time to back. But Syndra actually throws out this stun. And I kind of call bullshit. Because that hitbox is just fat. But I set up the Q on her. And she walks up to try to ulti me. But she made the mistake of walking up too close. Taking tower aggro and not having enough mana for ulti. So what I did was I decided to go in on this. I had the dagger perfectly set up on her. I jumped in, picked up the dagger. I W'd and then I ulted. So that the W dagger gets picked up. I immediately get the Shimpo reset. And if you see, Thresh flays. But I actually E out of the way. And auto the Syndra. And then I W out. Just to get to safety. Guaranteed safety. And I noticed that Thresh took two tower shots. So then I go in with the QE auto. And I get the kill. So here is just an example of using Shimpo as you're resetting. Or using your Shimpo in general just to displace yourself. So that you can avoid abilities, avoid skills, anything like that. And jumping out, try to stall for your triumph is also a really good thing to do as well. Now here is just me being pretty strong, knowing I had the damage to kill them. I'm putting myself in a scenario where I want to get a multi-kill by myself, just like 1v3, right? So there's an Ivern, there's a Thresh, and there's a Jinx. So in situations like these, what you want to do is if you're pushed up in lane, you want to just set up daggers until they overstep. So here, what I'm doing is I'm just setting up Qs, setting up Ws. So here, I actually have a Q set up already. So I Q the minion, set it up, and then I E onto the Q dagger. And then W wait just to try to bait them in. Now the only two CC that I have to worry about here is Thresh, Q, and Thresh Flay. Because those two will stop my ulti. So I see the Thresh hook down. I W away and Jinx actually runs up to try to do something. She thinks she's safe because she has the Iron Shield and the Thresh behind her. But I actually have the damage to burst her down. So I baited her into the W. I E Gunblade. And I wait for the flay. See the flay come out, get hit by it, and then bam, that's when I commit. So then I QE ulti. The Q is set up nicely to transition into the Ivern and the Thresh, kill the Jinx, and immediately jump in onto the dagger, E W Q, and they both die to the Q. So this is just a good example of showing that you have to wait out the CC. You have to find an opening to go in and get your full burst off uninterrupted. And the way to do that is just by baiting out CC and kind of baiting them into overstep. Especially if you're trying to make plays on your own. That's kind of how you want to do it. You just want to set up daggers until they step on it. And then bam, you can go in and get free kills. That's it for the video. If you guys enjoyed the video or want to see more videos like these, make sure to let me know in the comments. Hit the like button. Subscribe for content like this. If you really want to step up your cat game, then make sure to stay tuned for the future videos. Keep practicing, keep learning, and I guarantee you will climb. Play smart, and I'll see you guys in the next video.